Our next round is called This Is My, where we bring on a mystery guest who has a close connection to one of our panellists. This week, each of David's team will claim it's them that has the genuine connection to the guest. It's up to Lee's team to spot who's telling the truth. So please welcome this week's special guest, Richard. <laughs> So, John, what is Richard to you? This is Richard. He's the stunt horse rider who galloped me through a moonlit forest so I wouldn't miss the Man United Bolton game. <laughs> Gabby, how do you know Richard? This is Richard. He is the flight attendant who persuaded me I wasn't dying, but I had trapped wind. <laughs> and finally, David, what's your relationship with Richard? This is Richard. He came to my aid at the local tip when I lost my specs in his great big skip. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. So, there we have it. Lee. Right. Would you like me to describe him, by the way? Would that help you suss out which of the three he might know? Yeah, a little, uh, little, little bit of audio description. OK, well, he, he looks quite a cool dude, actually, so we can rule out that he knows David. Uh... <laughs> Actually, I think you might know him because he's dressed as a policeman and he's not talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, who are you going to quiz first? Right, John. He's the stuntman that covered you. No, the, well, uh, we were using horses in this production I was filming and um, we were in Scotland and that's when he offered to help me. But what, what was it you said? You said he galloped you to a television. So, what, you, yeah. he, you got on the back, spooned yeah. behind him. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say I was spooning him. No, I was just riding on the back of his horse. And you were clothed. <laughs> Fully clothed. <laughs> yeah. And the horse would have been quicker than a car in this instance. In this instance, yes. We talked about it early in the day, and he said, "I know exactly where you can watch it. There's a pub over there, and I can definitely get you there for kickoff." And he, and did. He, and he literally pulled up outside the pub. You jumped off and ran into the pub like a desperate cowboy. Well, no, he came in with me. Oh, he came in with you? Yeah, where you put the... Yeah. Well, you the tied it up outside... You the... tied it up outside on the thing? <laughs> <laughs> Was this in, like, mid-America in the 1870s? What do you mean you tied... What thing did you tie it to? Well, I, I didn't see. I just got off the horse and then he came in. You got where you were going and you went into a bar and you didn't take the horse purely for the joke that would have followed. <laughs> Am I, the, am I the only one who doesn't know what the joke would be? Uh, the reason why you... Why don't... the long face? Yeah but the, re... yeah, but the reason why you've never heard that joke, Rob, is because people... it's a bit sensitive with you, isn't it? <laughs> you sound like you've got quite a little round face. <laughs> isn't that lovely? Yeah. No, thank you very much, yeah. Chris. I sound what? like... It wasn't meant to be a compliment, but... <laughs> what kind of faces do the rest of us say? Yeah, like that's we quite have? interesting, yeah. Take some time. Take some time with Lee in particular. Lee, <laughs> Lee just—he sounds like he looks like a cheeky little monkey who's the only one that knows he's about to fling a poo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> that kind of. <laughs> Please, can I use that on my posters for the next tour? <laughs> what about uh, David? Oh, David, yeah. from Voice Alone. He's, he sounds like he looks like a Toby jug of a duck. <laughs> that, that is bang on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think the I top... Mean, it, that the... is the image I go for. <laughs> I think this deaf neighbour of yours was right the first time. <laughs> right. Lee, who would you like to quiz next? OK, uh, Gabby. Just remind us, Gabby, for, so for the benefit of the So, this is Richard, and members. he is the airline steward who persuaded me I wasn't dying. I had trapped wind. OK, so what, what were your symptoms? I felt, like, uh, really breathless, and I, I just couldn't... I felt like I couldn't get a breath right. at first. You hadn't opened the window again, had you? <laughs> 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 and, um, my husband looked across the aisle and said, he's a bit pale. Well, you say your husband looked across, you mean he came from economy up to first class. <laughs> 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 he said, you look a bit pale, and I said, I can't get, I can't get any breath, and I just felt, I felt really, really um, uncomfortable. Where were you going to? We were going home. From? Well, that helps us, we were going <laughs> home. 
We were going from um, Gibraltar. Quite close to home at this point? No, quite early on in the flight, about okay. 10, 15 minutes into the flight, I started to feel a bit dodgy. Anyway, then, um, lo and behold, Richard came down and he said, yeah. you all right? I said, um, I said, I'm really not feeling great, actually. He said, come up here and brought me up into the galley. Yeah. And then, well, I heard him um, talking to um, the captain. Ooh. And um, and then I heard the word doctor being mentioned, oh, and I no. heard the words... Uh, oh, my God, what, what do you mean you heard the word doctor? Because well, that could be quite scary if he said, uh, listen, pilot, we need a... I'm not a pilot, actually, I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that, would have, that would have released the what? wind. <laughs> I thought I was dying. I thought I'd ruptured my appendix or something like that. And what kind of things did he say to calm you down? I think he said, well, if we do go down in the sea, don't worry, you're full of wind, you'll float for longer. <laughs> <laughs> well, at some point... <laughs> <laughs> <Chilled her out>. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, he kind of knelt down in his very caring way and said, um, there is a possibility this could be trapped wind, which filled me with horror. Um, because it was just going to all come out at some point, and that's embarrassing. Yeah, but um, better than dying. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then he just went one step further, um, and he said to me, if we lower the plane, there's a good chance... Well, so, the, uh, so your internal pressure would be less? So he said, there's a good chance it could come out, but I've got to warn you... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> uh, would that work? Does the science add up there that you're more likely to point, release wind? At this Otherwise, point... If... By that logic, everyone would be farting on takeoff. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not saying that it was beginning its descent. Well, I don't know how far out it would begin its descent, but um... well, not 15 minutes after takeoff. <laughs> no, it wasn't 15 minutes. By this point, we're like we're like over halfway into the journey. So, so he said to the the, the cockpit, mm. "Bring it down." And did they do that? Apparently, um, they did. Quick, bring the plane down. I think she might blow. Yeah. <laughs> So what happens? They bring it down, and yeah. what was the effect on you? Well, um, within a few seconds, uh, minutes maybe, yes. um, a tiny, tiny, tiny little burp came out of my of, mouth. Of your mouth? Of your mouth. Yes. <laughs> and I thought, that's it. I'm good. And I walked back to my seat. Did I everybody celebrate. cheer and clap? Yeah. <laughs> the truth is, when I the say that... The truth is, it, it didn't just... happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. The truth is, when None I of this it, has ever happened. I don't sounds... think you've even ever been to Gibraltar. <laughs> <laughs> the only bit of this that I believe is that you fart a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what about David? Remind us of your um, claim. Uh, this is Richard. He came to my aid at the local tip when I lost my specs in his great big skip. <laughs> What, what were you doing at the tip? What were you getting rid of? I was getting... Not another body, David. <laughs> <laughs> Not another body, no. Uh. Um, I, I bury them. <laughs> Cover them in acid. <laughs> uh, but, no, this was two CD players yeah. and a DVD player. What did you do with them at the tip? I put them in the small electrical goods skip thing. And so what did you do? Did you lean right over? To put them further in the middle. I leant right over. Did you place them? Was it a shallow skip? Or no, no, it was deep. You had to go up a staircase, like a, a wheelie set of stairs. Yes, now most people throw things in skips by just lobbing them. They don't yeah. lean over. And I'm or trying to work up out. Stairs and then lean over, no? Yeah, yeah. Well, you... the, the up the stairs thing, I'm not quite. I, I mean, how tall was this skip? Like... Why didn't you oh, just throw the, them Oh, in? it was about a foot high, but I thought it would be fun to climb a staircase. <laughs> <laughs> Take us now to the crux. The. <laughs> The losing Correct. of the glasses. The losing of the glasses. OK, so I I'm, I'm throw the things in, uh, the skip, and they make a, a crashing sound, yeah. and I lean in to peer to see what I, the, what I in my mightiness, have wrought. <laughs> <laughs> my glasses are a bit loose and... You had quite a sweaty head from all of the effort of looking the two CD Absolutely. players Absolutely. The, the, the effort player. going up all the stairs, thinking, this isn't very practical. What if I was throwing away a dishwasher? <laughs> <laughs> And um, they slid down my sweaty Toby Jug duck feet. <laughs> uh, I fell and, into the skip. And fell into the skip. Did you shout yeah. for help? I went, I went, excuse me. And then what, Richard appeared? He, he appears. He goes into the skip. Yeah. I mean, I'd explained in words what had happened. I said, what my glasses just fell off. They should be directly below here. 
And I can't. Did he not say, well, and in you go then? Yeah, why no, did he pick he up didn't his say in you go to then. do that? He said, no, he said, it's all right, I'll go in and get them. And, and did you ask why? Why he'd go in and get them? Yeah. Why? Did, did I want to talk him out of it? <laughs> <laughs> So he'd come over and you'd said, could you go and get my glasses? <laughs> I quacked, he gave me some bread. <laughs> I said, actually, that's not good for me, I need seed. <laughs> Never ever say that to a stranger at the tip. <laughs> so, did you get the glasses? Yes. Good. Right, we need an answer. So, Lee's team, is Richard John's horseback hero, Gabby's steward saviour, or David's rubbish rescuer? Oh, tricky, tricky, it is tricky. Really tricky. Uh, Chris. I, I can't go with Gabby myself. I don't know. Like That's trapped a... wind is very painful. <laughs> what about David? If anybody's going to the tip to do the physical work, it's, it's Mrs. Mitchell, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> So who are you thinking, John? Well, we were chatting earlier in the green room and he told me he was a Man United fan. OK. OK, so what are you going to say, Lee? We'll go John. You're going John. OK. Richard, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Richard and I am the flight attendant that helped oh! Gabby. Oh! You're on national television. <laughs> Did you ask the pilot to lower the plane? We were descending anyway. Uh, <laughs> yes, Richard is Gabby's steward saviour. Thank you very much, Richard. <laughs> so please welcome this week's special guest, Mick. <laughs> so, Gabby, what is Mick to you? This is Mick, and I deliberately tripped him up during the wheelbarrow race at my son's sports day. <laughs> OK, James, how do you know Mick? This is Mick, and for six months, he was my sworn enemy when a practical joke got out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Lee. This is Mick, he's my son, and I'm only allowed to see him every second <laughs> Friday. <laughs> 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 Sorry, no, that's not it. <laughs> this is Mick. I once took him home from nursery instead of my own son. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. Is Mick Gabby's cheated child, James's feuding friend, or Lee's traded toddler? David's team, where would you like to begin? Well, um, <laughs> Gabby, the, uh, the wheelbarrow race, you were also a competitor. What, what, was the, what was the format of the race and how did the accident Your happen? classic sports day wheelbarrow race. Child is the wheelbarrow. I was driving my son as a wheelbarrow and Mick's mum, Barbara, was driving him. And um, there's always a lot... I, I feel our family gets a lot of pressure on sports day because my husband was an international rugby player and I, I did sport. And I, people always look at us as if they're the ones to beat. You know, I always feel that added dimension mm. of mm. competitiveness. Mm. You were a rhythm gymnastic, weren't you? I was a gymnast. Yeah, I think yeah. they're looking more at him. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> so we were in the lead, my son and I, mm. and, um, and you know, in, in your peripheral vision, you can feel somebody coming, and as we got to the turn, they were level with us, and... Um, and my son's arm buckled, and oh, um, oh. which is, for a wheelbarrow race, is a bit of a... No, no. That's, mm. So it takes you a couple of seconds to recover. So now we're behind. Quite so... painful for your son as well. Perhaps that should be the main <laughs> concern. <laughs> Classic sports person. <laughs> oh, this That's is... a no, no. <laughs> we need this. <laughs> so we got we got back level with them, and and I I'm ashamed, obviously, about what happened next. Um. So I can feel, um, you know, these horrible thoughts coming into my mind, you know, we could take him out, you know, we could... <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Come on, this is why we've been taking all the drugs! <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I basically, I stood on... <laughs> I stood on his hand. And so... Oh, I know! Deliberately? No, <laughs> you were thinking we should take him out. <laughs> so um, he, he then slightly buckled. So he which then, is a no-no. <laughs> <laughs> he got himself back into the race, yeah. and I decided that I couldn't let us win because of, that could be construed in some people's eyes as cheating. 
standing on the opposition's oh. hands. Yes. And in some people's eyes, physical assault. So, <laughs> I, had to, I had to then sabotage us because I couldn't let us win, so I deliberately kind of pushed my son into the ground. So you assaulted <laughs> two children. <laughs> Kind of just you know pretended to trip onto Reuben, so right. and then he, his arms buckled double buckle, which is a no no no. no, no, no. no. <laughs> and that meant Re Reuben that... is your boy. Yes. Oh gosh. Yes. Oh yes. Yeah. You know the oh. one. With, you know one with the one with the face like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who would you like to speak to next? Okay. Um, James. So Mick became your sworn enemy because of a practical joke that got out of hand. That got out of hand. Yes. So what was the practical joke or prank? First of all, I'll say for the record, before we carry on, I hate this boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nothing but content for him, and I'm furious he's got on this show. <laughs> I just think I feel I can only see him every second Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so what was, the, what was the practical joke, James? He put cabbage leaves in my bed. How did he get in your room? I was staying at his house. On a sleepover? How old are you? <laughs> a few years ago. Yeah, and when he wouldn't have been born. <laughs> he, was, he was nine. And you were, what, 31? <laughs> I was, what, 28, 29? And how do you know him? My, I know his dad. But he's, he's his son. <laughs> 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 and you were staying at their house? Yes. Why did he put cabbage leaves? Why is, what is, why is that a thing? <laughs> well, it's not a thing until he started doing it. Yeah. <laughs> There's something severely wrong with him. I don't know why he started... <laughs> but you say st this kind of started stunt. doing it. Was yeah. He, what, what do you mean, start, this is a one, a one occasion when oh, you're is staying it? there? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> This is the first of many, David. So, you, so I said got out of hand. You I do not use those words lightly. <laughs> so you regularly stay at the house of... Oh, no. Oh. This little man does not restrict these pranks to his own house. <laughs> he has no respect for anyone's privacy and will cross any boundaries available to him. I hate him with all my heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he initially put cabbage leaves in the bed you were sleeping in when you were True. staying at his father. <laughs> yes. Right? And then subsequently... Yes. ..he has followed you <laughs> and put cabbage leaves in other places you've been sleeping. No! OK? <laughs> what then? He sent me a cabbage in the post. <laughs> He sent me half a cabbage, cling-filmed, in a box. I was out when they delivered it. I had to go to the post office to pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> there was a note inside that said, you got cabbaged again. <laughs> so, OK, so he, 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 he's doing that. Did you... <laughs> bearing in mind that this is a minor, did you... At any... It was a major, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Did you at any point retaliate? Yeah, but it took me six months. <laughs> what did you do? After six months of this... Well, I... when you say six months of this, yeah. what is this? There's the initial <laughs> cabbage leaves in the bed at, yeah. at his house, yeah. and there's the posted cab half cabbage. Yeah. Anything else? His granddad cabbage me to my face. <laughs> what does that mean? He gave me a present. It was all wrapped up nice. I thought it was a nice present. I unwrapped it. It was another half a cabbage wrapped in cling film. <laughs> <laughs> Members of the public started cabbaging me. I made the mistake of talking about it on the radio, and then everyone got the idea that I couldn't turn up to a gig without there being a cabbage hidden somewhere in my dressing room. <laughs> well, thank God you're playing safe and not saying it on telly, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, did you retaliate? Did I absolutely did. I removed all of his belongings from his bedroom and replaced them with cabbages. <laughs> That's, I would say, a disproportionate response. <laughs> Six months of my life, David. Six months of my life of not knowing where the next cabbage was coming from. It was horrible. <laughs> I had to go big. I've been cabbage so many times. Somebody started a Twitter account was tweeting pictures of cabbages on me every day. They said stuff like, oi, oi, savoy. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's a lettuce! It's a lettuce!
Oh, but come on, cut me some slack. No, no. I would say that anyone who can enjoy that joke about a lettuce would have to be a sociopath. <laughs> All right, on to Lee. Lee, <laughs> remind us of your story. This is Mick. I once took him home from nursery <laughs> instead of my own son. Why did you not recognise your own son <laughs> by using your eyes and knowing what he looks like? <laughs> I, I, I do recognise my own son. But we had this new pram and uh, the pram... He, I put him in the pram. He was very young at the time, because, well, you have to, to go to nursery. And uh, I put a him in the pram. pram? At nursery? No, not a pram, a push <laughs> buggy. A pram push when they're, when push they're sort of... Tiny. A push chair, you made one mistake. You say lettuce <laughs> instead of cabbage. They're on your back. You say pram instead of push chair. I get to see him every other week. I'm stressed. <laughs> I put him in the push chair, right. and then I got chatting to all the other mums and dads and stuff. Got chatting, turned round. Little did I realise that one of the other parents had exactly the same posture. And because he was asleep, I just didn't bother talking to him because he was asleep. Pushed him and got all the way home. Long walk as well, because he goes to school in London and we live in Aberdeen. <laughs> <laughs> when, how long was it before you realised? Uh, probably Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was about... It was, believe it or not, uh, preferably do. <laughs> yeah, that's very much <laughs> the question. <laughs> believe it or not, uh, it was as I went into the front door and I pushed him towards my wife, who was coming towards me, and, and she said, that is not my son. <laughs> But the other mother would have recognised yeah. her yes. child, so let's let's go to the let's other go mother. Let's go to the other mother. Let's, so, what happened there? So obviously I'm not there to see the other mother. Because no, but I'm, presumably in the police interview later, <laughs> you've gone through those details. No, I knew it would be a bit of a nerve-wracking experience, so I thought I'd better play safe and just keep him. And that's what we did. We just ended up bringing up another child. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I got into the house, pushed him into the house. Yeah. My wife said, "That's not my son." So I went, "Oh!" I realised immediately what had happened. Obviously, I turned round and I raced back to the school very quickly. So I got in just in time for them to go, "What are oh, you?" And then... So you got back. You got back just in got time. Got back in time. Just before Mick's mother was going to start screaming, so "My child was... has disappeared! My child has disappeared!" Yeah, because no, because what had happened is she, she was getting a bit frantic, but someone had, had calmed her down by doing the obvious and pointing to the child and saying, "Think, use your logic here." Yeah, there's a child. child abductors don't tend to leave Swap. a child yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> so David's team is Mick hmm. Gabby's cheated child, maybe. James's feuding friend, maybe, or Lee's traded toddler. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the cabbages that, that is a good trick because cabbages when they get warmed up stink. I also have, you know, been to uh, many a sports day where where the parents do get incredibly competitive. Mm -hmm. but I would probably lean towards Gabby. What about you, Melvin? Which way are you leaning? I believe Gabby, but James is just weird, so I believe him even more. <laughs> your, your paranoid view seems to be the whole country's in on it. Now everyone's sending you cabbages. Every time people laugh at me, I suspect they're my enemy, which makes my job very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> You think Gabby, you think Gabby, but James even more. And uh, David thinks it's me, so... Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, James. <gasps> You're going for James. Mick, would you please reveal your true identity? I'm Mick, and I am James's worst enemy. <laughs> Mick is James's feuding friend, and here's the proof that, <laughs> that... That is what James did to Mick's bedroom. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mick. <laughs> so please welcome this week's special guest, Miller. <laughs> Steve, what is Miller to you? This is Miller. He presented me with a trophy after I rode two miles down a river on an inflatable rhino. <laughs> Gabby, how do you know Miller? Uh, this is Miller, and I know Miller because we often take one of my dogs flying. <laughs> and finally, David, what's your relationship with Miller? This is Miller. I accidentally outbid him for a cuckoo clock when I sneezed at an auction. <laughs> <laughs> so there we have it. Lee's team, where do you want to start? Uh, shall we start with... Who do you want to start with? Steve? 
Yeah. So, just remind us again, because I'm confused with the words. Uh, so, he gave me a trophy yeah. after I rode two miles down a river on an inflatable rhinoceros. What a man. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time I rode down the river on a real rhinoceros? It's <laughs> <laughs> on, just say it. <laughs> Why have you kept in touch, Steve? Uh, we haven't. <laughs> Did you not like him? <laughs> um, it's, uh, it takes place in Fort William in Scotland, and I very rarely go there. And now. is this an annual event? Yes, it's the, the river that runs down the side of Ben Nevis, uh, which is a, a whitewater river, and it's run uh, on lilos usually i've been on that that amazingly i honeymooned very near there you weren't there at the time that this event was taking place. no but i know that is true that fort yeah, william is I'm, near ben nevis so that bit I'm worried, <laughs> this is the bit i'm worried about that because i need your help and so far you go oh this is true there is a mountain <laughs> What, what, what's the, such a big deal about Miller that he got to present the trophy? <laughs> That's very aggressively <laughs> funny. <laughs> what does so Miller do? The race, the race is run to raise money for the Lacaba oh, Mountain sailed. Rescue. <laughs> it's paddled to raise money for the, uh, for the Mountain Rescue. Oh, and, uh, what a man. Miller's... <laughs> <laughs> well, there's everyone else on an inflatable animal. Everyone else is on uh, lilos. As in I, the traditional, I was... what I'm thinking of as a lilo is just a, like a bed that's inflatable. Traditional, what you sleep on when you go camping. So yeah. it's a fun event where it's, a, it's like the water equivalent of a fun run. You've got to try and stay on in a hostile environment on, on a lilo that's not designed for it. Yes? Exactly. So why, yes. have you, why did you choose to do a, a rhino? Uh, I, was, I was going off script. I, w I went down to Toys R Us to try and get what I thought would be... I, I wanted to get an inflatable T-Rex, but they didn't have one, they just had a rhino. So you're saying there's a great big Toys R Us next to Ben Nevis? <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> All right, what are you going to move on to? OK, Gabby. Mm. Tell me again. Something about dogs flying. So, <laughs> <laughs> Miller um, has his pilot's licence, and we take my dog flying occasionally. We? Me and Miller. Do you you know Miller two take the dog? Yes, Miller flies the plane. And what do you do? Right, You're so a passenger or are you learning I'm, to fly? No, I'm not yet. I'm not learning to fly yet. But, um, That's instantly much more credible, because I thought you meant that your dog flew on its own. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd already excluded you from this, but now I understand. <laughs> It's not you who wants to go, it's the dog that wants to go. Gabby. No, initially I wanted to go. It was an accident the first time. Um, we, we, he, he kept his light aircraft um, at an airfield and I had taken... I was taking the dog for a walk in a park nearby and basically I was supposed to meet my husband to hand the dog over. He'd got delayed and I turned up and I was about to say, I'm really sorry, it's not going to happen today, I've got the dog. And Miller's um, up for it and he said, just bring, bring the dog with you. Right. And, and that was the first time. So then what happened the second time? Well, the dog just loved it. The dog, like, you know... Did was... it tell you? <laughs> <laughs> when this man approached you with a, no. pla <laughs> with, with a plane nearby, you just... You... <laughs> <laughs> you were happy to assume he was a pilot. <laughs> <laughs> Take your dog up. No, we we pre-arranged the whole thing. I don't think you've told us the breed. Boxer. <laughs> boxer. Boxer. Yeah. Boxer's boxer. a big dog. Milo's a boxer. Big yeah. dog a boxer. Does he wear a seatbelt? Yes, but he doesn't... He, honestly, he's so laid back. He just whoa, kind of, whoa, like, whoa, whoa. sinks into the seat and... He wears a seatbelt. Well, you put... You strap him in. He's <laughs> put a seatbelt on. Are you sure he's not terrified? <laughs> he's never peed himself on these little hops. Yeah, but what about the boxer? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so the, the, this is the bit now, it's the detail. It's the seatbelt. Well, when a dog in a seatbelt. The seatbelt on, because the first time, because I didn't know, you know, if he'd react OK, so I, being his, you know, his mummy... His no, you're not his mummy, Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your human. husband is very ugly. No, but in his... <laughs> <laughs> Final question. If there's a bit of turbulence, do you ever turn around to him and say, is it Windy Miller? <laughs> <laughs> Now, what about, what about David and the cuckoo clock? Wow. Oh, wow. Well, oh, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd be interested to know what your accidental yes. outbid was for what amount. I think it was about £250. And had you been bidding up to that point and then stopped? I had not. No. You'd not bid at all? No. What were you there for? I was there because my wife wanted to buy a dining room table. MFI was shut, was it? <laughs> No because, no, because as you've had occasion to mention, Lee, I'm terribly, terribly posh. <laughs>
<laughs> right. And so you could feel it coming on as the bit, and were you worried that this was going to... Well, it, no, I wasn't. I didn't think this would happen. I thought it was a ridiculous thing to have happened. If you told me beforehand, would this happen? I'd say, no, I would never believe anything like that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> you have to convince us we're struggling. <laughs> yeah. I, I get hay fever at some times of the year, and this was one of those times. You're not going to end this story weirdly. Every time I sneeze, I hold up a number. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of had the number there, but I didn't hold it up. What did you do then? I, I sneezed. Surely, if the system is you hold up a number, <laughs> at some point your hand must have come up as well. You're echoing my very words. <laughs> That's what I said. Of course, it's a ridiculous situation. Someone sneezes, they just happen to have the number slightly visible, and the auctioneer takes that as a bid. What sort of a system is that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a quick reenactment of the moment. I mean, you were at 230 pounds, 240, yeah. 240 yeah, no, pounds, going to the gentleman in the nice, <laughs> soft, <laughs> crushed hair. <laughs> 250 pounds! <laughs> 250 pounds! <laughs> no, what kind of system is this? How lovely that David Mitchell is big for this and the money oh, oh, will go to a good home. Course, Thank you, David. Oh, no, please, auction, yeah, but... Oh, all right, I'll be quiet. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> So how did you make the connection with the Miller? <laughs> because I was aware that he'd made the penultimate bid, but I tiptoed up to him afterwards and asked uh, if he wanted to buy it for the um, for, the, for, for his last for, bid. for his last Which bid. Was so what? I would only have been, I think, been about two, uh, ten, ten or less than I'd bid. But if you exploded like that, I don't believe you would have tiptoed. And I probably didn't actually tiptoe. I wasn't actually, you know, I was probably resting on the heels of my feet. <laughs> but I, I walked, <laughs> what I thought was quite discreetly, although I accidentally bought a couple of vases on the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we need an answer. So. Is Miller Steve's prize presenter, Gabby's pet pilot, or David's clock collector? Well, I believe that he gets hay fever, David, but none of the rest of it. Uh... <laughs> so you believe the cool thing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Catherine, you're saying it's not David? I don't think it's David. I believe Steve's won trophies, but none of the rest of it. So I believe Gabby, I think that all sounds um, You very believe true. she likes to take a boxer dog flying yeah. with Miller? Yeah. I, I don't think you can take a dog on a plane, you know. Well, you, you, know, you, know, you, you can, you can, can, you can no, take it's... dogs on planes uh, if you go through the correct channels. Really? You they can. sent a dog into space. Yeah. They never got it back. <laughs> they sent a dog into space. <laughs> well, I don't believe Gabby's story, but I do think he looks like a pilot. Well, that, that's the, that, you see, if we're going to talk about looks, <laughs> I would say it's the only time I am going towards David. He looks like a man who's desperate for a cuckoo clock. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a man whose budgie recently died. Mm. And he's looking for some company once an hour, but just for a split second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Gabby. You think it's Gabby? <coughs> You're saying. I say Steve. When no. all three of us are agreed, it's not David. Yes. Yep. We're okay. going with Gabby and, and the flying. You're saying it's Gabby, it's the dog in the plate. Miller, would you please reveal your true identity? Okay, I'm Miller. I presented Steve with a trophy <laughs> for riding down a river. Incredible Reynolds! <laughs> yes, Miller gave Steve a trophy. Thank you, Miller.